verse 44. So we're looking at the good word of the Lord. And we've stopped yesterday at the point where we're talking about the truth. That the truth is when the revelation of word comes. Remember, we established yesterday that the same word, the same word, God, word, revealed to man by the instrumentation of the Holy Spirit, written down, is called scriptures. And that the same Holy Spirit can open your spirit man to get revelation behind what is written. Now, when that revelation comes to you, the Bible calls that truth. The same spirit, the same Holy Spirit that moved the prophets and they received the revelation of scriptures and wrote it down, the same Holy Spirit can move a man to get revelation behind the written word. And that revelation is called truth. And we establish that once truth comes, Satan becomes disabled. In John chapter 8, verse 44, we read this yesterday. Jesus said, you have your father the devil. He was talking to the, uh, to, the, to, the, to the people who didn't believe. He says, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. So we established from the word of God that Satan does not have capacity to handle truth. He doesn't have the capacity. That the moment truth comes, Satan leaves. The moment truth comes, every work of the enemy is destroyed. Why? Because he can't abide where truth is, he cannot. He cannot. He cannot abide where truth is. And we saw in Psalm 45, though, you know, where the Bible made us to know that, you know, in your majesty, ride prosperously because of what? Because of truth. Because of truth. So when truth comes, you ride through life like a king. You ride prosperously. You ride majestically because you are equipped with truth. Because of truth. And then he said, and your right hand shall teach you terrible things. That is, you begin to you know, manifest or show forth some unusual, you know, power of God in your life begins to manifest, show forth unusual things. Testimonies begins to come. Why? You are cruising at the frequency of truth. You are cruising at the frequency of truth. Now, at that frequency of truth, sickness is no longer an issue. Disease is no longer an issue. You know, Satan is no longer a problem. Hallelujah. You don't spend all your life, all your time, you know, looking for devil to fight. You cruise through life as if it doesn't exist. Truth. And I pray today that there will be baptism. Of the spirit of truth. Amen. You know we read yesterday. That in John 14. That Jesus called the Holy Ghost. The spirit of truth. The primary assignment. Of the Holy Spirit in your life. Is not to speak in tongues. 
is not to cast devil out. The primary assignment of the Holy Ghost is to open your eyes to truth. Is to open your eyes to truth. Now, to drive this message home, I will want us to look at another dimension of truth as it is referred to in scriptures. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. If you are still here, shout a bigger hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, the Bible also refers to truth as light. The point when truth comes, the Bible refers to truth as light. Now, in Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 130, Psalm 119, Psalm 1, verse 130, let us see what the Bible says there. It says, the entrance of thy words give it what? Give it what? Now, how does the word enter into a man's spirit? The same Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth comes to unveil truth. And the Bible says, when truth comes, it's like light has come. When truth comes, the Bible refers to it as light. It gives it light. It gives it light. Light. Now, in Psalm 119 verse 105, it said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, 1 John chapter 1. Let's read from verse 1. Say with me, say light. light. Uh -huh. Say one more time, say light. light. Now, 1 John chapter 1 from verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, declare unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Now verse 5. What is it writing unto us? So that our joy may be full. Why? Well, he said, these things we are talking about, when you understand them, your joy will be full. So, let us read verse 5 and 6 together. But let's read verse 5 first. One to go. This then is the message which we have heard of him. Now let's stop there. This is the message. In other words, everything we've been talking about, this is the message. This is the message. Now, remember, in verse, uh, go to verse 3, verse 3, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you. Now, what why are we declaring these things to you? He says, that you may have fellowship with us. That is, you come to our level of fellowship. So, which means, the level of fellowship that the apostles were enjoying was not an exclusive level. Only for apostles. Other people too can enter into that realm. You know, today we love to celebrate people and say, ah, that man of God, hey, the level that he is, 
Yay! Nobody will. now he can get there. But here he's saying you can enter into that level of fellowship. Are you getting it right now? And he said, that's why we are declaring these things to you so that you two can come up to our level. And we can fellowship together. In other words, these revelations are not exclusive. They are meant for all. Glory be to God. Now, let's move on. He says, now back to verse 5. Back to verse 5. Let's read together. One to go. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you. Now let's stop there. So he said we are declaring what we have heard so that you can come to our level of fellowship and then your joy can be full. You can have the fullness of joy. You can you know, enjoy all that Christ came to give to us. Now, so he now wants to tell us the message. And he said, this is the message we have had and we have declared unto you. What is the message? Let's start verse 5 again. One to go. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Now, what is the message? The message is God is light. What is the message? God is light and in God there is no darkness at all. God is light. Now, Psalm 119 verse 130 again. Psalm 119 verse 130 again. The entrance of his word. Give it what? Light. Now, 1 John chapter 1 verse 6. God is light. That is the message. And the entrance of his word. Give it light. So what is the message? The entrance of his word. Give it God. That's the message. So every time truth comes. God manifests. Every time. And John said. Why we are sharing this. Is so that you can come to that level. This thing doesn't work for us alone. It can work for everything. That every time truth comes, God manifests. The power of God is available. Everything God is available right within the spirit man of a believer. The power to heal, to say, to deliver, to transform. The moment truth comes, he refers to it as light and he said, God is light. In other words, at the point of revelation, there are no impossibilities. No impossibilities. No impossibilities. So, if the entrance of his word giveth light and God is light, so the more the word comes, the more you are endued with truth, the more you see God at work. A man can be endued with truth light to a point that God will just be manifesting heavily all around him. I read a book Adventures in God in 1994 the story of John G. Lake. John G. Lake was having ministry in Spokane in Washington and during the time of his ministry he started what is called the healing rooms. So many people got healed that Spokane in Washington was described as the healthiest city in the world. Nobody was sick there in the city. 
John G. Lake went to South Africa as a missionary. During the outbreak of the bubonic plague, you know, just like this COVID, he volunteered to pack corpses and to help the sick. And they were to put, you know, all this gear, all this thing they put on people. He refused. So the doctor said, no, you're going to infect yourself and die. You know, bubonic plague is like anthrax. It enters into the blood and then, the, you know, the blood begins to come out from the eyes, nose, and all that. And kills very fast. At least COVID will still take some time. Bubonic plague is very fast. And he told them, he said, they should take, you know, when people have bubonic plague, they foam in the mouth. You know, so he said they should take the foam which contains the bacteria from somebody who have just died. So they collected the foam and he said they should put it under the microscope. They put it under the microscope. The bacteria were alive. And he said they should put the foam on his palms. They put on his palms. And he said they should put under microscope again. They put under microscope. All the bacteria were dead. All. One day he went to a mountain to pray. And he saw an African woman back a baby, like a two-year-old child or so, of, or three, two or three years old child. And while he was praying, he saw that the woman just put the baby on a rock and went into the farm. So he was surprised that ah, this woman is not even caring. This child will just walk away, crawl into the bush, and walk into the bush. He said, so he moved there after the woman has gone to the farm and saw that the child was not moving. The child was paralyzed. That was why the woman just put the child there. And then he lay hands on the child, prayed for the child. The child recovered, began to walk, and he went to pray. And by the time the woman came back from the farm, saw the baby walking around, the woman was so surprised, she looked and looked and looked, didn't know what was happening, carry her baby and ran back home. When I was reading his book, the book on him, Adventures in God, sir, this was 1912. The depth of revelation that he had. I said, no wonder the light that John G. Lake had at that time the revelation, the truth that he was walking in at that time. So it was not because he was praying and fasting. The guy was loaded with some unusual revelation, truth, such that God was manifesting easily. Why? Truth has come. Light has come. Because the entrance of his word give it light. Now, he said, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declared to you that God is light and in him is what? No darkness at all. No darkness. Say with me, say no darkness. Now, I love the way he said in verse 7. He said, I mean, uh, verse 6, sorry. He said, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Now, he says, if you are armed with light, there can be traces of darkness. So if you claim to have revelation and light have come, we shouldn't see darkness. He said, but if we still see the work of darkness, he said, you don't know the truth. You do not know the truth. That is, you have not encountered the truth if we are still having signs of darkness in your life. You know, one time I had this challenge in my body. And I was, you know, browsing on truth. And I wanted, and I've been praying about the issue. 
You know, I will pray, the thing will go, then it will come back. I will pray, it will go. Then one day, light came. And when it came, Pastor Bode, I only uttered the statement. I said, it will be an insult on grace for me to pray about this issue. It will be an insult. And that was the day it vanished. I felt something leave me. I felt power flow. Why? Light came. And I said, for me to still be praying on this matter, it is an insult on grace. And that was the end. It will be an insult on grace for me to be praying over this issue. Now, I didn't say that out of boasting. I didn't say that because I had somebody say, no, I uttered that because light came to a point that I know that I cannot be in light and at the same time have darkness. Remember, by the word he created, are you getting me right now? Therefore, every time light comes, creative power is available. Creative power. And that is why today I want you to believe if you are sick in your body this morning, get ready for healing. Get ready for creative power. Is somebody still here with me? Can somebody shout a loud hallelujah? hallelujah? Say with me, say, my father, open my eyes of understanding. Say it again, say, my father, open my eyes of understanding. Say, spirit of truth. Guide me into all truth. Say it again. Say spirit of truth. Guide me into all truth. In the name of Jesus. Ah, if we have fellowship with him. And we still see darkness. You know, before I understood this, I used to think the darkness is sin. No. It's not sin. That if God can be light, and light enters you, and it says in him is no darkness at all. Not 5% darkness. Not some darkness. No darkness at all. At all. At all. And you know, I observe in life, that light does not struggle with darkness. Anywhere there is darkness, the moment you switch on light, what happens to darkness? It vanishes. And the moment light comes, what you notice is that all the cockroaches and rats, what do they do? They run, they disappear. They look for another dark place to hide. The cockroaches and rats are the works of darkness. They only thrive where darkness is. Once light comes, you don't need to pray. They go. See, once light comes, there are some things that you know they are not just possible. They are not just possible. So don't let any ancestral power, household wickedness, witches and wizards and all these things, don't let them come and make you to feel, you know, as if you are not this. If it is not possible for God to do what he has promised in your life. No, 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 no. Light, light. Flood your spirit with light. Flood your spirit with light. Flood your spirit with light. And you will see the manifestation of God. I thought somebody would shout amen. Ephesians 1 verse 15. 
Mando shalihat ivakata. Breneik is supra clandosh. Enfik ibratile mo supik. Gomank iprat landek o supi. Bikupa rush branak. Zompeko parash tilaba. I pray for you today the spirit of revelation. The spirit of revelation may come upon you afresh. In the name of Jesus. Dive ilamenda and dope ikela. In that area of your life where there is any trace of darkness, oh God, flood the spirit of your children with light. Ah, Gome. He said, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. No darkness at all. This is the, is the message. No darkness at all. Wherever darkness has been hiding and oppressing, Lord, flood the spirit of your children with light in the mighty name of Jesus receive it now receive it now Walks of darkness, sickness, disease, infirmities, demonic oppressions, yokes of Satan. Every walk of darkness in the life of God's children today, I command you to go now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let every oppression cease. And now, Gevosht and Beluba, Brande Kope, Stope, Lidu Prenu Kastopara, Linomongo. Prande li pranda rakapada roste katopaya renomo to katopaya rekopata kopa let the work of darkness cease the work of darkness the work of darkness because he said in him is no darkness at all every work of darkness cease every work of darkness cease in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Mm. Let, let, let's, let's, let's rise up. I still want, to read, want us to read two scriptures and then we will pray. Pastor, some things are going to break for her. Light. 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 Jesus, light. In him is no darkness at all. At all. At all. And he said, if we say we have fellowship with him 
and we are still experiencing darkness. He said, we have not gotten through to, we have not gotten through. So Paul prayed for the Ephesians church. He said, we are for I also. After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. What was the prayer? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Amen. What does it mean to be enlightened? To be flooded with light. One translation says, your spiritual eyes become flooded with light. With light. With light. Amen. That ye may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards what? Who believe. According to the working of his mighty power. Now Paul said, I've been praying without stopping. That your inner eyes, your spiritual eyes will be flooded with light. Amen. Now you need to understand why he prayed this prayer. Now Ephesus was one of the biggest cities in the ancient Roman Empire. But not just the biggest. It was the center of demonic worship. You remember in the book of Acts, when Paul went to preach at Ephesus, that was where there was an opera in the city. And they said that Paul was telling people not to worship Diana. And then all the artisans for Diana began to say, great is Diana of Ephesus. In fact, they had a temple at Ephesus, which is called the Temple of Diana, which is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The temple had over 200 columns. A mighty architectural feat for ancient people to build. Now, that city was the place, man, where Paul preached. And people brought magic books. <laughs> Now, this was 2,000 years ago. And the Bible says the magic books worth 50,000 pieces of silver. Now, that is millions in today's money. Books. Books. For what? Magic. Books for magic. So, you are in a city where everyone is practicing black magic, practicing voodoo, practicing, you know, worshipping Diana, worshipping all kinds of idols, worshipping all kinds of things. Center of occultism. Books. If they ask all the people in the Kurudu to bring their magic book, I don't think it can watch one million. All the people who are worshipping idols and all that, you tell them to bring all the things. It can be up to one million. But this one, books alone, books on magic in a city worth several millions. Books. Paul said, what you need to live in that city is light. That's why he said, arise, shine, for your light has come, for the glory of the Lord 